Hello, it's the next part of Mini Robot Dog, which is an open source quadrupedal robot, and I've made this with radio control servos. So it's really accessible, and the whole project is open source, and you can find links to the Canon code in the description below. So there are some limitations with this project, mainly the servos that I've used, which cost about £20 each. There are far better things out there, but this is really a test to see if I can actually make a robot dog walk dynamically, and I pretty much achieved that last time. So it does a gate where the legs are in diagonal pairs and it balances on two legs at a time as it walks. So there are a few issues we need to sort out and some of those we're going to discuss today and hopefully get this into a state where we can walk it all around and rotate and do various other bits of walking rather than it just walk in a straight line continuously. Before we move on to the modifications, it's just a quick ad for ways you can support the channel and that really makes all the difference to the projects. I have Patreon and YouTube channel membership where patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up and be involved in all that discussion. I do have a merchandise store where I sell t-shirts, baths, socks and stickers with all the things on that I've made over the years and I'll have a mini dog t-shirt coming up soon as well there. There are some affiliate links in the description for Amazon and various other services some of those are free trials. If you sign up using some of those links, it won't cost you any more, but I'll get some money. Right, let's have a look at the redesign, and the first thing is going to be a new foot profile. So you may have noticed in the footage, it looks like the feet are slipping as they're going back, and that's for multiple reasons. One of those is that the servos can't achieve the full speed that I want them to, and so they don't actually get to the position, and they start to pick up before they finish their stroke moving backwards. There's not much I can do about that, really, apart from upgrading all the servos. We really need it to walk at that speed because that's the sweet spot at which it's stable. So also the foot kinematics are wrong because the original feet that I designed on here are kind of round and the actual point on the ground is somewhere out in front of them which I put in the kinematic model. So I'm now going to redesign that foot so that essentially as the foot angles backwards or the leg or the shin angles backwards the foot actually sort of gets longer rather than curving off and disconnecting from the ground so it stays connected for longer. Also found the dog work better on carpet anyway because it can grip the ground better. So I've put some extra grips on and these are still printed in Ninja Flex which is a flexible TPU material. So we're going to reprint all four feet and see hopefully that that works much better. So here are the two next to each other. This is the old one, of course, and as the leg tilts backwards, of course, the foot sort of gets shorter, and that's probably why it disconnects with the ground, whereas the new one now, as it comes back this way, effectively gets longer, and hopefully should maintain some contact with the ground there. So let's put them on and see what happens. Right, so I fitted those new shoes, so everything seems to be working, so that's pretty good, but is it gonna walk any better? So we've got that walking gait again with two feet in diagonal pairs doing the same thing and hopefully all those feet are moving back at a constant rate which is supposed to move the robot forward at a constant rate. And all we're doing in an attempt to stay stable is just moving the feet backwards and forwards in translation as the robot tips. So if I tip it backwards and forwards you should be able to see those feet moving about 20 millimeters either way and that just keeps the balancing point over the two feet that are on the ground. It's pretty rudimentary and there's probably other stuff we could do if we had much more agile actuators. And off it goes. So you can see the feet definitely aren't slipping on the way back now and you can see those pointy toes are helping quite a bit. But now they are much more grippy so occasionally we get a little trip where it appears to trip over its own feet a little bit. But apart from that it seems to work okay. Now the feet are moving in a triangular motion and the actuators aren't quite quick enough to get the foot down. So I've had to slow it down a little bit which has made it quite a bit more clunky than it was so in a way I kind of prefer it working the way it was. So I think probably my foot profile is the right shape but it's a bit too grippy and it's getting stuck in the ground because the actuators aren't fast enough to get that foot over and move it backwards so it's stabbing forward and getting stuck. So the triangular pattern I'm talking about is the foot moves back and then it goes up and then it comes down. And so obviously this foot is going to now stick into the ground as it comes down again. It doesn't have enough speed really to get up in a square and back down, which is what we really want to do. So we don't actually push the feet forward and stall it as we're trying to move backwards with the other feet, which is why I think it's tripping. So I might have another go at these feet and see if we can make some with a slightly different profile. 
It's foot profile number three, which is the same sort of shape with that toe, but it's smooth so it doesn't get stuck in the ground so easily, which doesn't seem like a good idea, but we'll see how it goes. At the moment, we're just pushing the limits quite a bit of the actual mechanical structure, so we'll do whatever works, I guess. These are actually just PLA, they're not Ninja Flex anymore, because it's much cheaper and much quicker to print, of course. So let's stick those on and see what happens. So hopefully it's really easy to see what I was talking about when I said the feet were sticking in the ground as they were pushing forwards and now you can see they're actually slipping forwards as a result of the smooth feet, so I was right about that. It's pretty repeatable but it does look a bit like it's moonwalking. I'll just turn it round and send it back the other way. So it definitely is balancing and it's taking all its feet off the ground but there is a slight slip there. So we need to see if we can do something about that but it is actually going much faster than it was and it is maintaining that velocity. So here's my high-tech diagram of the gait, which is of course several positions along the bottom where the feet move back, and then one giant leap where it comes over and goes to the next position. So it starts at one, goes to two, three, four, five, all the way along the bottom. And these ones make sure that the feet will move back at a constant rate until it gets to here. And then it does two steps to get all the way to the other end. And of course the feet cascade however you want to do the gait. And it's just a step sequencer and that's pretty much it. So what I've now done is a bit of a change so that instead of doing a triangle shape like this, it actually comes all the way out to this position and then drops down. So that angle here is much steeper. So hopefully it's not pushing forward so much and jamming its foot into the ground. So that's really working a lot better. You can see it's putting its foot right over before bringing it back down. We can see the motion's still a bit jerky though but it is nonetheless balancing and taking all its feet off the ground and walking fairly consistently, so I'm pretty happy with that for now. It's going to take something much more complicated to sort out making its body move at a constant velocity though. And of course this thing is just quite a wobbly mess actually, there's lots of unintended compliance in there due to backlash in various gears and mechanisms and natural flex in the construction there so of course if it's not going to move its body at a perfectly smooth speed and we can't solve that issue when it stabs its feet into the ground of course there's some deceleration so we're always going to get this kind of jerky motion and I think fixing it although backlash compensation is something that's used in CNC machines a lot I've got lots of axes here all pointing in different directions so fixing that's going to be quite difficult and needs some much more complicated motion control. Of course we did intend to have compliance in these joints, at the moment I'm not using it, I've zip tied out the springs which has left me with a little bit of compliance but we also had plans to put magnets and hall effect sensors in like I did with the first one which would actually make that actively compliant so we can read how much stretch there is on those springs on the joints and we can actually actively drive that joint in relation to it. I think that's really only going to work if the joints are much faster and they smash into the ground a lot quicker and then we could try and average out to make it even. This is something I did with my test dogs which use brushless motors where we can actually back drive that gearbox so there wasn't much backlash in the gearbox but we made it deliberately back drive but with a low ratio and then looked at the encoder position of the motor where it was supposed to be and where it was actually being back driven to and then moved the motor in reaction to that to try and make it actively compliant and that was a much smoother mechanism with a much quicker route to stability actually using the compliance on each side of the robot in relation to the inertial measurement unit data to try and make that stable. That was one of the plans for these dogs but I think that's not going to work so I'm calling that one a fail on this unfortunately although it's an interesting experiment. The next thing that needs solving is starting and stopping walking smoothly so at the moment when you switch it on it's in its 6-axis kinematic demo mode of 6-axis including rotation and translation on those sticks if I press this switch, it goes essentially halfway through a walk cycle and then this switch starts it off walking and then stops it wherever it was and then this just sends it back to the four-legged pose. What we really need is to be able to smoothly transition from this into suddenly walking without scraping its feet on the ground and then when I stop walking, go back to the normal pose. So I've implemented a couple of extra states in my state machine, so I've now got the kinematic model that runs, that's exactly the same as before. Now the first switch puts it into a state ready to walk, so that brings the legs longer and they have to be that long to walk, otherwise they can't pick up far enough because I run the end stops on the servos. The next switch primes it for walking and you'll notice it puts the legs back a little bit, so it's pushing forward on its first step. And now as you'd expect, the joystick, if I push it forward, will actually make it walk. So there's a couple of extra states there that get it in the right state and make sure the feet don't scrape on the ground when it starts and it takes that first step. If I let go, it'll finish its cycle and then cleanly put its feet back again. And it does that every time I push forward. So if I push forward, it'll do one step with each leg and then go back to that default state again. And if I hold it, 
it will keep going till I let go and then it will finish its cycle. And then of course I can go back to how it was and that goes back into the kinematic model demo mode. So let's give that a go on the ground. This is the kinematic model demo mode where it's doing all of its axis of rotation and translation. So all of that works. And then we'll switch the switch and get it ready for walking. So that's upright, primed and push the joystick forward. And it trips a little bit to start with, but then it starts walking quite cleanly once it's got its stability sorted and it's balancing over the two legs. So my starting positions probably aren't quite accurate enough to get that going properly. Let's try that again with one walk cycle. Oop, a wobbly mess. A wobbly mess and then it sorts itself out. So I guess it's a bit like throwing a two wheel balancing robot on the ground and it immediately trying to catch its balance. But I highly suspect we're pushing the mechanical limits for this robot again. You'll notice when it stood upright at the beginning when I flicked that switch, it was fine on the stand like this. But when I did that on the ground, you'll notice the back legs are really suffering, just the same as the front legs were suffering in version 1. And they seem to get pushed backwards and they can't quite take the load for a bit. And you'll also notice something funny is happening with the front right foot, where it moves to the right position when it's on the stand. When it's off the stand, then it seems to shuffle along the ground a bit. And I think there's multiple reasons for that. I think one of those is just the power and agility of the servos. They're really suffering and they're really on the edge there. So it's only just walking when it's stable. But if it goes off stability too far, then those servos don't have enough power, enough speed to cope with it. And also think there's probably some tolerance issues with the feedback pots within the servos that make sure they go to the right position. So these are normally just used for radio control steering, where you're basically using a stick on a controller and you're looking at the car to see where it's steering. Whereas here, we're trying to get them to be positioned accurately. So even though they all start at the same position, at the same angle, and I've got the same scaling factor, they don't necessarily all end up in the same position because those feedback pots are probably five or 10% tolerance. So there's probably five or 10% error in there. So about doing a multi-point calibration cycle on every single one, a calibration curve basically to try and get rid of that on every joint, it's gonna be very hard to get them to move to the same positions, especially when they're under load and they're not really high power enough. I could of course upgrade all the servos to high voltage brushless servos and there's plenty of those out there for about 90 to 100 pounds each. There's 12 of them in this machine though and so that's going to be about a thousand pounds just for the motors so I don't really fancy spending that much. We could of course upgrade to proper robotic servos like Dynamixels or one of those other brands with CAN buses and lots of feedback and parameters we can change and much more reliable tolerances and mechanics but again those are going to be about the same amount of money for the torque that we need. So I don't really want to invest that much in this robot. The whole point in this robot that it was R&D for Open Dog to see if we can actually make a robot work. So for the money, about £100 a motor, I can easily get a brushless motor. And we already have the O-drives that drive those motors in Open Dog. So it'd be far better use of money to actually build another bigger model with far bigger brushless motors and using that back drivable gearbox technique that I mentioned earlier in the video and that really worked very well in the test dogs that I built. But can we make open dog work with the same code? That's got loads of power, it's driven by ball screws with two kilowatt brushless motors. Well I think the answer is probably still no. This dog is 10 times heavier than this dog so it's about 50 kilograms as opposed to five and that means the inertia in it is 10 times bigger as well. So when we see the little dog doing a little bit of a wobble as it walks for whatever reason that's going to be 10 times worse in open dog. There's really no compliance in this dog at all. There's a bit of natural flex in mini dog, but open dog is totally rigid. And we already saw that issue where when it puts a rigid foot down and everything isn't perfectly balanced and it's not perfectly meeting the ground, then that pushes the dog all around and everything goes crazy just because its joints are so rigid and so powerful. So in a dog this size, we're really gonna need that natural compliance I mentioned, perhaps with back drivable gearbox where we can actually go and tune the amount of compliance. So much as I'd like to have made this dog have more functions to be able to rotate and sidestep and all those things, I really think I'm fighting an uphill struggle here with the servos and I don't want to drop lots of money on this to try and get it to work. If you are going to build one of these from the open source plans and this whole project is open source and the link's in the description below, then I'd highly recommend using the absolute best servos you can afford in it. It's either that or really you've got to stick to a statically stable gate I showed last time where it only takes one foot off the ground at a time. That worked pretty well and then you could probably get the other functions working although it doesn't walk particularly quickly. That's probably the best way to conserve power on those servos. 
So the next thing is to build a new hardware revision and that's going to use something called Quasi Direct Drive, which is basically the biggest brushless motor you can get with the most torque and the lowest reduction gearbox or whatever the reduction is to get to the actual joint. In my case, it'll probably be a belt reduction because that's pretty simple. And then we can back drive that really easily and that will make a virtual spring. So then we can have lots of compliance or hardly any compliance. And can we, we can vary that dynamically on each cycle in code. And that's essentially what I did with my test dogs. That also means we'll be much faster to get those feet over to take the step rather than jabbing them into the ground. We can also do much quicker, more agile changes in the rate of the gait which could be related perhaps to the accelerometer data. So as it's doing that wobble backwards and forwards, we could try and get rid of that by driving the actual rate of the feet in relation to that to try and get that body to move at a constant speed. And that's going to make the gait much better. And it'll also probably just move with lots of power to where we need it to move to do all of those other functions. So I'm going to be starting with a code base that I've got from this one, probably exactly the same kinematic model with a few parameters changed. The compliance will of course be different, but the actual gait will still be probably built on the same code. So I may come back to this if that works really well and I may invest on bigger servos on this and see if I can get this method of compliance to work. But for now, I don't wanna make lots of videos of it not working very well. And um, the same I did with OpenDog and we don't wanna end up on episode 20 and it still doesn't really do anything better. So I'm cutting my losses again, kind of moving on to another hardware revision and we're just going to keep doing that until we get something that works. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget you can support me on Patreon or YouTube channel membership if you want to. And there's probably a mini dog t-shirt up by now if you look in my t-shirt store. All right, that's all for now.